Hello everyone, this is The Astro Geek Comics, where I talk about astronomy and space science through art. If you are interested in sci art and space comics, do check out my social media links from the description below. Before we start with this video on exploring the universe, do click on the red color subscribe button below to never miss out on any exciting spacey stuff from me. This video is going to be our first video in our series on exoplanets. We will discuss how planets form, what are exoplanets and if our solar system is normal or not. It was through the efforts by astronomers like Copernicus, Galileo, Kepler, Bruno and many others that we understood that the Earth revolves around the Sun. And just like Earth, Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, Venus and Mercury are other planets going around the Sun. Some of these planets have their own moons. This brought up the question, how did the system, the solar system form? One of our current most supported theories for solar system formation are a mix of core accretion and disk instability model. In these models, our sun was created by the collapse of a nebula we call the solar nebula. A nebula is a cloud of dust and gas in space. This collapse was caused by disturbances from a nearby supernova. As the gas and dust, mostly rich in hydrogen and helium, began to spiral inwards and collapse towards the center, the temperature of this center kept rising along with pressure. This structure formed the protostar which would later become the sun. As the temperatures raised to above 3 million degrees, fast winds started to blow around the center. Surrounding material was still falling inwards. The temperature soon reached the limit for hydrogen nuclei to fuse into helium and release tremendous amounts of energy in the form of heat and light. This was the sun. The sudden release of energy pushed back the infalling material. The dust and gas had already started to slowly clump together as they spiraled in. Due to the shock energy and winds from the newly formed sun, the material stopped spiraling in and began collecting inwards. The lighter material, that is most of the gas and volatile elements, were pushed away from the sun and the heavier dust stayed closer in. This explains why we have rocky planets closer to the sun than the gaseous planets. The gases began cooling as they drifted away from the sun and beyond the frost line, they were able to slowly collapse and clump together around the ice and some dust that was carried along to start forming the gaseous protoplanets. The frost line lies just beyond the orbit of Mars. Since gases drift away quite fast, the gaseous planets only had a few million years to form, which is not much in astronomical scales. After reaching a certain size, these protoplanet clumps stopped collecting more material and began collapsing with each other to fuse, merge and create bigger planets as we know them today. This cleared out most of the material spread out in our solar system and planets slowly settled into stable, almost circular orbits. It is predicted that the gas giants did travel closer to the sun but then returned back. This would also explain why Mars is so small, as I did in my comic numbered one on my Instagram. Even Neptune and Uranus would have formed closer to Jupiter and Saturn, and due to the gravitational interplay, slowly drifted away to their modern orbits. One reason for Jupiter to not continue drifting away towards the Sun would have been the influence of the gravity of Saturn. The gas giants later caused smaller protoplanets and the remaining space rocks around them to fling towards the inner rocky planets through their gravity, which started the late bombardment period. This is when the Earth would have received its water and other organic material from the space rocks and also when our moon must have formed. Slowly everything cooled and settled into a balanced state. Close encounters and even collisions with asteroids suggest that the solar system is still changing and evolving. Once we had grasped the origin of a solar system, curious minds began to wonder of worlds outside the solar system. These objects around stars other than the sun were called exoplanets or similarly exomoons, exocomets and the like. The idea isn't very new. 
In the 16th century, the martyr of science, Giordano Bruno, had said that stars are other suns in the universe, which had their own planetary bodies. In the 18th century, Isaac Newton, in his Principia, had echoed the same view. The first record of an exoplanet is believed to have been made in the year 1917 around the one Manin star indicated by the presence of high amounts of metal in its spectrum, but was incorrectly believed to be because the star was a F-type main sequence star, but the metal was because of a planet. The first confirmed discovery of exoplanets was made by Alexander Wolskan and Dale Frail in 1992 when two exoplanets were discovered around the pulsar PSR B1257-12, also called Lich. Later, a third exoplanet, even smaller than Mercury, was discovered. You can know more about why these planets were named after demons in the comic numbered 5 on my Instagram. The first planet to be discovered around the sun-like star was found in the year 1995 around the star 51 Pegasi by Didier Quellos and Michael Mayo. This planet was named 51 Pegasi B. The exoplanets are named by using lowercase alphabets starting from B following the name of the host star. The first planet is denoted by B followed by the second which is denoted by C and so on. Since then we have come a long way. As the date of making this video, that is September 2020, we have confirmed the discovery of more than 4300 exoplanets including 780 multiple planetary systems. We have not just discovered that how planets form, but we have also discovered stars in different stages of planet formation. A study done on several hundred stars in the year 2004 using the Infrared Astronomical Satellite and Spitzer Infrared Space Telescope revealed 266 young stars with protoplanetary disks. These stars aged between newborn to 800 million years old, which was almost the formation of the Moon, and lie within 500 light years of the Earth and are almost near 2.5 solar masses. The study showed that collisions during planet formation are very common. The above result was published in the Astrophysical Journal. NASA's Spitzer and European Space Agency's William Herschel Space Telescope found that the stars HR 8799 and HD 95086 located 295 light years away and 129 light years away respectively, have two dust rings and a halo of dust around them. A study by University of Arizona's Kate Sue and others found asteroid belt-like disk around Vega and also around Formalhaut in the year 2013. In fact, it isn't just planets we have discovered. We have also made a candidate discovery of an exocomet around the star Beta Pictoris. Well, after discovering so many worlds outside the solar system, it just seems natural to question, are we normal? The answer is not so much. In the majority of planetary systems that we have discovered, we have hardly found planets in numbers as big as 8. The closest is Trappist-1 with 7 planets. Our planets themselves are an oddity. It appears most of these stars have gaseous giants orbiting so close to the star that they are tidally locked to it with just one side constantly facing the star while the other side is bathed in darkness. Most planets are closer to their stars than Mercury is to the Sun. Also, another weird thing is that we seem to have a surprising gap due to the absence of any planet between the size of Earth and Neptune, which occurs quite commonly elsewhere. We have no super-Earths or mini-Neptunes. Even the orbits of our planets stand out. The orbits in the solar system are so close to circular in contrast to the highly elliptical orbits discovered in other planetary systems. One explanation for this may be the bias in our methods of discovery 
that they have towards planets of certain sizes and distance from their stars as allowed by its sensitivity. Better telescopes like James Webb Space Telescope and more sensitive methods will help us discover more systems, probably even more similar to ours. But one thing is sure, there are countless amazing, beautiful, horrifying, weird and even counterintuitive worlds out there waiting to puzzle us. This was it for the first video of the series Exoplanets. In the next videos, we will be talking about different categories of exoplanets and what they can tell us about it. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the Astro Geek Comics. Click on the bell icon to never miss a video. If you are interested in buying the official Astro Geek Comics merchandise in or outside India and support me, you can find links in the description below. Do comment your thoughts on this video and suggestions for future videos. I'm eager to read them. Thank you for supporting this Sci Art project. You are the best. Until next time, stay curious and keep looking up.